Good day, class. I am hoping that you have learned a lot or gained insights about what software engineering is all about. All we can say that software engineering is more than the software that is produced. It is also more of the process that allows us to develop a quality software. We also have identified the generic framework for software engineering that encompasses the five generic processes. We have also learned from agile process models that these generic framework can be identified or can be presented differently, but the essence of the activities within the framework are practically the same. From this lesson onwards, I will be um, I will already be introducing you to the methods that are usually utilized in each of the processes in framework. More specifically, for the duration of this semester, we will talk about the methods and tools used for communication, planning, and also in modeling. For the next semester, which is your CMSC 129, we need to discuss as well the, um, the methods and tools that can be used for construction and also for deployment. This means that you have one whole year or two semesters to complete your software project. We will begin digging deeper into each process framework starting with communication. Before any technical work can commence, it is critically important to communicate and collaborate with the customer or our stakeholders in order to understand their objectives for the project and to gather the requirements that help define software features and also the functions. Understanding the requirements is the most difficult task in software engineering for me. I'm not discouraging the other tasks, but for me, this is the most difficult. By the way, there is a specialization specifically for understanding the user requirements. And they are the business analysts, the systems analysts, and normally their work or they are in charge of gathering software requirements, identifying the, te um, the, the technology needs, creating software design, cre uh, writing specifications, and in the case of traditional process models, they also need to coordinate with software engineering about uh, software engineers about what needs to be done. In our case before, if the, uh, the, re the relaying or the channeling of the communication, it should be from the business analyst going to the team lead, then going to their team. So the business analyst needs to inform the team lead what the needs or the requirements to be done to the software so the team lead will be the one who will be uh, who will in charge in educating the team about all the user requirements the broad spectrum of tasks and techniques that lead to an understanding of requirements it's called requirements engineering like anything engineered it implies that the systematic and scientific process is followed in the creation of the work product. Requirements engineering bridges design and construction. To me, just like what I said earlier, this is the most important aspect of software engineering that needs to be emphasized. I am, uh, I am not saying that the rest of the software engineering work is not equally important. But requirements gathering is the first stage where we can introduce quality, right? If the requirements are not understood properly, the resulting designs and software product will eventually have poor quality. So we have to take requirements engineering so seriously. Okay, class? These are the most commonly issues you will encounter soon with your stakeholders. Let me introduce first the first issue. One moment. Okay. 
Customers usually do not know what they want. Yes, most of the customers are not technically inclined. So we need to ask probing questions that are relevant to the potential project. Also, we need to make sure that the questions are all close-ended so that they can answer it easily. Uh, before, all I did Actually, I just provide them a questionnaire or a survey. All they need to do is just to encircle yes or no. Or they need to select yes or no, like that. Second, customers usually do not tell you everything. I had a bad experience before that I went back to the client's office to collect more information because, again, the customer do not tell you everything. Make sure as well that you will establish a very good communication with them. Work on your interpersonal skills. You need, you need also to respect them by also respecting their time. If they are busy doing something, kindly look for a time that they are available. And sometimes it's good to bring something, right? But if you don't have that something, um, just a simple hi or hello, or just a simple greetings every morning or every afternoon. Like, for example, Ma'am, kumusta man ka, ma'am? Kumusta man yung pamilya? Kumusta man yung adlaw ka? Ano, nangapin na ba ka? Like that. <laughs> Next, customers usually do not understand what features or functions provide benefit. Yes, this is true. They usually provide functions or the suggested functions or features of the software without knowing the intensity of it. Remember that customers are not always right. Sometimes we need to enlighten them so that they will not suggest anything under the sun. They thought that we can solve everything. And also make sure that you will also provide them a proper documentation um, indicating the duration or the timeline of each feature they want so that they will always be updated. Okay, lastly, the requirements change. We need to educate them that the requirements sometimes can be changed and the changes they want to be inserted in the software will not take effect ASAP. We need to uh, we need to follow the process. So class, you had been warned. So far, those are the most common issues you will encounter soon. Again, it is very important that we decide a good and suitable process model for each project. Also, no matter how intimidating, requirements engineering can be fun. It is like solving a mystery and uncovering truths so in requirements engineering, we lay out some methods or practices that can help uncover and understand user requirements.